Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Firas bin Ahmad Mufis from Malaysia. And my topic of presentation today will be entitled An Overview of Abortion Law, a Comparison Between Malaysian Law and also Indonesian Law. So, before we continue with this discussion, I think it is very important for us to have an idea on what this discussion will be. This is the outline of my presentation. First of all, we will have an idea. We will, uh, I will discuss with you the introduction. After that, we move to the factors lead to abortion and both Malaysian and Indonesia perspective before we compare between the both country. We also will have a look on the Islamic perspective on the abortion uh, act. And also we conclude with this discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's very important for us to know what is mean by abortion and what type of abortion is being emphasized in this presentation. Uh, generally, uh, abortion can be uh, defined as the termination of pregnancy after accompanied by resulting in or closely followed by the death of the embryo or fetus. So there are two types of uh, abortion being, uh, being identified, which are naturally uh, that uh, basically considered as miscarriage that occurs without any medical intervention. Uh, whereas the second one on which being emphasized in this presentation is about induced abortion, abortion that take place with the medical procedure. Uh, in fact, most of Abortion cases are conducted in secrecy and have mostly not been exposed to the public uh, uh, compared to other types of crime that happen around us. Uh, so I think before we discuss about abortion in detail later, it is very important for us to know what are the, fa what are the factors that lead to abortion to be conducted and to be choose by the people around us. And I think this practice is not only limited to both Malaysia and also Indonesia, but it uh, can be acceptable in the worldwide. The first of all, uh, first of all is about un unwanted pregnancy that occurs especially among the youth and adolescent, adolescents resulting from the intercourse out of wedlock of, of, or after being a victim of rape or in case. Uh, it is undeniable that being pregnant at a very young age will have a huge, huge both physical and also uh, emotional impact on an individual, especially uh, they might be prepared to become a mother at a very young age. Uh, other than that, premarital pregnancy among young, adults, uh, young people seem to be dangerous because it leads to complication during the labor process due to the physical structure of young girl, which is not compatible or not ready yet for labor process. And the second one is the lack of religious understanding. The second reason, uh, really, uh, as what we know, religion plays a very important role in controlling an individual behavior and guiding them in making a rational decision in their life. However, without a proper uh, understanding of uh, a proper religious understanding, this uh, leads someone to misunderstand, misunderstood the teaching of religion, which they having a thought that abortion is not a big scene and not a big matter, such as a baby dumping, which them, uh, which later made them believe that abortion is acceptable. And the third one is about unstable financing, uh, financial save, uh, saving. It is undeniable that planning to have a child, especially in this current pandemic situation, requires a very well-planned monetary saving, since many costs are in, needed in the future. And Discipline situation to keep survive in this pandemic situation, as well as followed by the lack of religious understanding, will indeed cause a pregnant woman or even a family or a couple 
to abort her pregnancy as is the way to avoid the unnecessary burden in the future. So ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the main focus of our, our my presentation is about Malaysia perspective on abortion law. In Malaysia, uh, this presentation will be divided into two. We have a look on the statutory provision as well as this selected case law. First of all, uh, abortion is being regarded as one of the uh, on one of the criminal acts, criminal act, and being discussed and prescribed in se in section three one two on this street, section three one six of the Malaysia Penal Code Act five seven four. Uh, to summarize. To make it simple, basically section 312 at the first place has made it clear that abortion is illegal in Malaysia and constitute an offence. However, under the, the state provision also, there are exceptions that uh, when the condition, has been, uh, the condition has been fulfilled, then uh, abortion is permitted to be conducted. There are two uh, exceptions. Number one is about the abortion process must be conducted by, by the, the registered medical practitioner registered under the Medical Act 1971. The second one is that the abortion conducted in a good way, which is to save the mother's life from any harm due to the pregnancy. On the other hand, Section 313 is concerning about the color of abortion with the absence of the woman's consent. At the first one, uh, 312 is about the abortion conducted or even being conducted by the woman herself with her consent. With her consent. The punishment uh, provided in Section 313 is also higher and severe than the punishment under Section 312 as permission from the mother has not been obtained, which is considered a kind of cruelty towards the woman. The next one is about section 314, uh, concerning about the case of abortion which, le which later lead to the death of the mother. And regarding the offence stated, uh, the law excludes the knowledge of the accused, whether he or she know that the impact of the abortion being conducted will result to the death of mother or not. Uh, dear friends, that's section 315 of the Penal Code, Malaysia Penal Code. It emphasizes the offense and punishment for the act that intend to kill an unborn child or cause it to die after it births. However, this section will not be applicable if the abortion conducted on the ground to save the mother's life. And the last provision uh, pertaining to the issue of abortion is that Section 316 of the Malaysia Penal Code was prescribed that we, which we can be summarized that we, uh, it, which it can be understood that any act committed to cause the death of a pregnant woman but only injured the woman and caused the death of the unborn child which is pregnant during that time then the person, the accused, being subjected under offence of the state provision. Okay. The next one is about uh, concerning of the case law because it is not sufficient to discuss uh, abortion in Malaysia without looking at the application of the statutory provision in the case law. Because case law uh, plays a very important role, very essential role in a common law country as early decided because it will be referred because we use this principle of sterilization. Uh, basically, I've prepared three uh, case law to be discussed with you, but due to the limited time, I mean, I think it's very, uh, it is enough for us to have a look on the case of Munah Binti Ali and public prosecutor in 1988, 1958, in which that, in that case, the defendant was found to be voluntarily caused a Chinese woman to miscarry when she inserted an instrument inside the woman's vagina. Yeah? However, uh, it is found that the Chinese woman was not 
pregnant during the abortion pre during the ab ab abortion process. Due to that, the accused only liable for attempt to cause miscarriage and not miscarriage. And regard to Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, now we're moving to the next, the second country, the, like, which is the Indonesia, okay? Which the second case is referred is, uh, sorry, Indonesia perspective. We are going to look about uh, Malaysia, abortion also being uh, considered as an illegal act in Indonesia and being discussed in Indonesia Penal Code in section 299 and also starting from section 346 until section 349. And the second uh, statute that governed the issue of uh, abortion also the uh, Indonesia had act. However, uh, I think it's very important for us to have a look at section 346 first of the Indonesia Penal Code, which it is stated that um, as any woman who with deliberate intent causes or let another cause the drifting of or the death of the foot of her or her womb shall be punished, shall be punished by a maximum imprisonment of four years. So I think section 346 is same as section 312 of the Malaysia Penal Code, which uh, telling the public that uh, abortion is con an act that constitutes an offence. The next statutory provision, uh, the next statute that also governs the issue of abortion also is about uh, the Head Act, like uh, Indonesia Head Act 2009, which has, uh, as the time changes, it has replaced the previous, uh, the previous Head Act 1992. Uh, basically, the obvious of comparison between those both acts is that this the strict the certification prescribed in the Head Act 1992 because uh, I think that 1992 Head Act is very strict and very uh, not open for any other spaces for exception because it's only focusing on the exception which uh, abortion is illegal to be allowed in order to saving the life of the mother and all the fetus. Whereas in the Act 2009, there are several new exceptions that have been described in Section 75, 76, 77, and, uh, and also uh, Section 194. Basically, Section 194 is about uh, describing the punishment for those who were violating the law that have been prescribed previously. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have a look on a section 75 of the Indonesia uh, Act 2009. So there are two exceptions here. Number one is about medical observation, finding that the continuation of pregnancy will causing harm, causing risk to the mother and all the fetus. And also after observing that the fetus suffer a severe genetic disease, and the second one is about the pregnancy. Uh, if the pregnancy occurs, occurs, occurs was the result of rape, which has a uh, psychological impacts, which cause psychological impacts to the victim. If one of these uh, conditions has been fulfilled, then the person is subjected to the condition to, uh, to, to conduct the abortion uh, as prescribed as section 76, such as the time limit must be less than 10 weeks of the pregnancy, must be conducted by authorized medical expert, must be received uh, the consent from both husband and wife must be, must be received, as well as the provider of the sanitation of the sanitation service must fulfill the requirement determined by the Ministry of Health. So we can conclude that, that if all the condition has been prescribed, uh, has been fulfilled, hence the abortion conducted will be considered as lawful act in Indonesia. Now to the climax of our presentation, my presentation today is about 
the comparison between Malaysian law and Indonesian law regarding abortion act. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, basically I would like to raise out three points uh, in regards to three points in regards to the comparison. And I, uh, it's very important to bear in mind that comparison doesn't mean differences or similarities because it is something all similarity also one of the elements between the comp in a sort of comparison. The first point is that about the status. In fact, both in Malaysia and Malaysia, abortion is an illegal act and constitute to an offense as the site in the respective penal code. In regard on uh, its exception, to allow abortion to be conducted, uh, both countries in nature uh, are quite in the same in nature due to the necessity to see the mother life and must be conducted by a registered medical practitioner. However, it's very interesting to realize that the Indonesia Act 2009 also acknowledged and allow abortion to be conducted for the rape victim. For the rape victim. And in regard to the punishment for those who have, for the accused, um, it's very important to, to uh, realize that the, puni the punishment set up for the offense of abortion in both countries uh, is seen to be pro pro proportionate sanction to the extent offenses have been committed. For example, in section 312 of Malaysia Penal Code, the punishment for imprisonment imposed for those who cause miscarriage on a woman with consent can be extended to three years. Whereas in the situation uh, where there is no consent from the pregnant woman, the accused is subjected to imprisonment for a term that may, ex that may extend to 20 years. Uh, whereas in Indonesia, Section 348 said that any individual who has caused a pregnant, pregnant woman to miscarry will be punished with a maximum with a maximum imprisonment of five years and six months. In the context of uh, abortion being conducted without the pregnant woman's consent, the punishment is more severe, which is maximum imprisonment of five years as stated in section 347 of the same penal code. Now we're going to have an Islamic perspective uh, regarding the issue of abortion. So ladies and gentlemen, as both Malaysia and Indonesia inhabited mostly by Muslim society, I, uh, it is very crucial and knowledge and discover on how Islam view the issue of abortion. In fact, despite Muslim, other society as a, such, such as Buddhists, Hindus, and Christians also facing the same social problems such as sexual insult, legitimate children, and abortion. This means that abortion doesn't only uh, occur among the Muslim society, but also other uh, religions also. Religion too. So basically, there are three uh, primary sources that I think is very important for us to have a look. Number one is the Quran. So there is no specific term of abortion or ruling on abortion being described in this Quran. But however, uh, uh, it is need to bear in mind that Islam very emphasizing, emphasizing the protection of human life fall under one of the uh, also, as example, I was see in verse 33, uh, uh, 31 of Surah Al Isra, and do not kill your children for fear your, of property. It can be concluded that death, the life is too precious to be wasted, even for an unborn child. So, probably, basically, we can know that abortion is being prohibited based on Quran, Quranic uh, texts, Quranic verses. The second one in hadith, uh, this one hadith is narrated by Abdullah and uh, can be found in Sahih, Bukh Sahih Bukhari, which is the uh, Prophet said that killing son is one of the greatest sin in the sight of Allah. So 
basically yeah aboriginal is also being prohibited by in the context of hadith and regard the scholars views i think it's very important lah for us to know because i uh it is believed that most of malaysian and indonesian muslim are practicing on the mazhab shafi'i that's why uh in my paper i will only merely i will merely have a look and discuss on the ruling of abortion based on shafi'i juries so uh in regards to abortion before the assignment 120 days of the pregnancy, the ruling of abortion, uh, there are some different opinion during that. But in regards to uh, abortion, after installment is totally being prohibited because the, the soul has been blown into the fetus. Okay. Uh, in, uh, and additional information based on Malaysian Fatwa Committee, abortion must be conducted before 120 days of pregnancy if there is any necessary that force to be so. So, as a conclusion of this paper, uh, as it is undeniable that um, this paper contains many flaws and also weaknesses since the topic is very quite challenging to compare uh, two countries regarding one uh, offense of abortion. And that's why uh, it is believed that as law, especially medical law, is dynamic. It is believed that the law on abortion will undergo revolution and, and change as time passes. It's been that there is, will be a revolution on the current law about abortion. So, uh, based on the, uh, my presentation, we have discussed what is mean by abortion in the, in the introductory part. Then we move to find out, to figure out what are the uh, main factors that lead someone to commit abortion. It's, uh, after that, this paper also has uh, uh, make any make an attempt to explore and discover every relevant statutory provision related to abortion in both Malaysia and also Indonesia. And but not, last but not least, this paper also does not put aside the Islamic perspective regarding abortion. Uh, and due to that, uh, it's very important, uh, I think, the, as what been mentioned uh, previously, it is hoped that the future researchers that intend to, to discover this topic will improve any points of this paper that might not be relevant anymore in the future. Thank you.